Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game or games review. In this, we have the Blue Collection by Little Rocket Games. Three different games here, uh, Insert Coin to Play, Cyber Doom Tower, and a One Card Dungeon. In the games, you're gonna be playing a one player game, or a one or two player game. And then finally on the very, very far left hand side there is going to be two to six players. And each game plays a little differently, but they're all in the same retro style boxes. In this game here, which is the one card dungeon, you're basically going to be getting a set of dice and a card which you will utilize in order to do a sort of dice rolling and a tactics based combat game using just one card that you flip over and use multiple rounds to defeat monsters and baddies and go through all the different stages of the fight. Uh, the other one over here is a Cyber Doom Tower, which is basically a cooperative game for one or two players where you're going to try and climb up the ranks of the Cyber Doom Tower, going up the elevator, crossing over certain areas in each of the floors to defeat the monsters, gain the keys, and eventually fight the main AI at the very top of the tower, or lose or peril in your attempts to do so. And then finally, Insert Coin to Play is a competitive game where you're doing sort of a roll and write, but in this one here, you're actually going to be drawing images in three different areas attempting to fill the moon with the cards that you flip, flip, flip over and then score points at the end of the game based on how well you did. If you can fill, fill all the pieces in and save all your coins and lives, you're going to score a ton of points. But if you are not able to fill in your pieces fast enough, uh, you'll lose coins, thusly lo losing HP and points in the process, and you will not succeed. Uh, three different games with three unique styles of play in the blue collection. I'll show you down below how they're played, what they look like, what they come with, and then we'll come up for my review for all three of the games. Games. So here we have the Blue Collection by Little Rocket Games, and these are the three games that are included. The One Deck Dungeon, the Cyber Doom Tower, and the Insert Coin to Play games. We'll talk about each one of these in order, going from left all the way to right, starting with, of course, this one here. In this game, you're going to be getting a set of dice of the four different colors, green, red, white, and black. You'll also be getting a card that will represent the dungeon. The green die is your player, and the red die are your monsters, the white die are your base stats, and the black die are the bonus stats you'll get every single time that you roll them. What you're going to do is you're going to go ahead and start off with the level one area indicated by the monster. You're going to go ahead and, oh, sorry, indicated by the number on the dungeon. See, these are ones here. You'll place the red die in each of the white areas here, the white ones, and you'll place their HP, which is going to be two based on this card over here. Uh, then you're going to go ahead and set the extra die aside that are for monsters and place your character die on the starting space of the board with the number six above, indicating your starting player HP. The starting base stats for your character is going to be down below the starting base stats for the enemy. The enemy is going to have movement, attack, defense, and ranged, and so will you. You'll get one, 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 and then two. Uh, these extra black die are what you're going to use to roll when you're determining your stats. And in the game, you're basically going to start off by rolling these guys here, assigning them to the spaces indicated underneath these white die, excluding range, because range will always just be your base stat. And then you're going to utilize your movement and hopefully attack. You'll take your total movement, which is five plus one and six, and you'll move your character on the board. You'll have certain movement re re restrictions. Basically, you'll be able to move uh, diagonal as well as up, down, left, or right. If you move up, down, left, or right, it'll cost you two points of movement, and to move diagonally, it will cost you three. So in that case, that's a total of five. With the six, I don't have any more left over. Uh, and that would basically end my movement. And then I would check my range. Um, and each space is going to be considered range, just like movement. So in order to hit this character here, the bad guy, I would have to have two, four, and six range. And in this case, I don't have six. I only have two. So that would end my turn. The bad guys would then take their turn. And they would just use their base stats. And they were basically going to be moving towards your character, trying to get to into range. As soon as they do that, they can attack. And this guy here, he's got five movements, so he can go one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, can't move anymore. Um, and then he'll check his range. He's got three, one, two, so he's good. And then he will do his damage, which is going to be four, uh, divided by my defense, which is five. Thusly, it's going to be uh, no damage. I have to, she, this character here has to do um, damage divided by, so four divided by five is not one. If it was one, it would do one damage. If it was two, it would do two damage. So in this case, if my defense were to be uh, two, for instance, maybe it was a four and it was a one. Uh, the 
four could go into the two, two times, thusly doing two damage to my character, putting me at four. And that's basically the idea of the game. I would go ahead and take my die. I would then go ahead and roll the die, assign the die, and once again attack the characters. And just like they attacked me, I would attack them, checking my attack versus their defense, reducing their HP, getting them to zero, would reduce all the monsters and destroy them, and thusly getting to the end here would trigger the next dungeon. You'd flip over the card here, you then check the twos, and you would start placing once again. Okay, this character has a total of three health, and there are two spaces there. My character will have uh, four health left over from remaining battle. Whatever remaining health is, that's going to be your remaining. Uh, that's going to be the health that you're going to move forward with. Then you can also get a choice before you start play. You can either upgrade one of your pips for your base stats by one. So maybe I want to make my movement a two as opposed to a one, and then I would roll my die and continue. Or let's say I didn't want to do that. Instead, I could increase my character's HP, thusly allowing me to keep fighting, especially if I have very little health in the game. And so you have those options. And in general, I'd probably suggest you to increase one of your stats. Once again, rolling, assigning, and then moving your character around the board. You can't move through certain obstacles. You're always trying to defeat the monsters, and the stats are going to change uh, based on the monsters. It tells you, yeah, it tells you the level of the monster, the HP, and their base stats. Rinse and repeat, flip, flip, flip. Get past level 12 and you win the game. Otherwise, you lose. And that's one deck dungeon for you. Uh, this one over here is your Cyber Doom Tower game. This one has a lot more setup. And I'll just go through the basics of the game because there's quite a bit. You'll, you'll take the four towers, unless you're playing with two players. Then you would take all five. In this case, we're not playing with uh, two players. So I'm going to set this aside. Placing the four, just like this. And of course, the AI sentry right above here. You can choose either side at random. And then you're going to go ahead and take this turn marker here and place it here at the six on the red space. Uh, in the one player version of the game, you'll have 12 rounds. After you end your turn, it's the bad guys. And then you'll move this down one. Then it'll be your turn and the bad guys. You'll move this down one. And that's how the game's clock will be. You'll also go ahead and take uh, the different robots, randomly shuffle them and deal them out to each of the areas here. Place each of the keys on each of the key areas for the different levels of the tower. Take your character and give it his luck, strength, and energy stats, which are all three. Uh, place your skill tokens in the bottom skill areas there. And then set aside four white and two red die for attacking. All the extra tokens and additional items are going to be set aside. Make sure you shuffle your item deck so you'll get random things. And then place your character on the starting level area of the first tower. On your turn, you can move, you can loot, and you can attack. In order to uh, do these things, you'll need to spend action points, which will start with three. At the end of every round, when you're out of actions, that will trigger the enemy. Uh, in which case, you're going to go ahead and refresh your energy back to three. Enemy will do its thing. And then on your next turn, you'll have three once again. To move, you can either move up, you can move left, or you can move right. And you'll be using these little spaces here. And your objective is to gather these keys. And once you've gathered all the keys, you can fight the AI and thusly defeat it and thusly win the game. All while at the same time, every time you end your turn, these bad guys are going to activate and they're going to be moving across the board here, pushing themselves towards you to fight you and have change in stats. Sometimes they'll also have different changes in abilities or what is required to beat them. In combat, when you roll combat die, you'll take all these die, you'll roll them, and then you'll assign them to the bad guy. Uh, bad guys have certain rules. For instance, you'll need a four that is a white or red there. You'll need another die that's uh, at least four or higher. And then this one here. And then these three would all be any type. Thusly, that would do a damage to the bad guy, utilizing these markers here. And all the different bad guys have different HP, different strength, which you'll check for each of the bad guys. And your damage is gonna be based on the weapon you use, or if you have a new weapon in tow, um, and you can also, of course, utilize different stats in the game to increase your pips on your die for damage purposes. Uh, and you're always going to be progressing in different ways. For instance, as you basically level up or gain your, you know, adrenaline will push on, you'll be putting your stats up, which will allow you, allow you to gather new skills. And as you move your stat bar over, you'll be pushing these one at a time, making it more challenging to get to the next different uh, skill that you have to uh, allocate. Uh, of course, if you want loot, there's certain areas on the board that will allow you to loot and looting is always free if, as long as you can make it there. When you take one of these guys and place it next to your character in some way, that box will have been looted and you can't loot it once again. And um, there's other spaces that will allow you to gather these keys here, of course. And then there's spaces that will let you increase your stats. Remember that when the enemy attacks you, you'll lose energy. And if you run out of energy, you're out of the game. And other stats are useful for increasing your ability to uh, in increase your pips on the die, depending on what you're trying to do, whether it be to hide from the enemy after you've stopped movement or whether it be to attack the enemy when you're utilizing your attack 
die. Basically, that's how it works. You'll go back and forth with you and then the enemy, and the enemies will be moving across these boards here, attempting to uh, basically cover them up and defeat you with their own range and attacks. The board will be triggering its timer, and you will be trying to get to the end of the tower to defeat the bad boss. Finally, insert coin to play. Uh, this game here, depending on the number of players you're playing with, you're going to give each player a sheet and a pencil. This is a card for reference. And then these are your cards you'll be utilizing for drawing. Now how it works is you'll draw five cards for each player. Each player will then choose three of those cards, draw them out on the three different areas here, and then shuffle them back into the deck. So you'll have three different shapes there that are going to be empty. They won't be filled in. After you do that, then you're going to separate the card, the deck in half, 15 and 15. Take a game over to a card in one of them and a game over token in the other one. You'll shuffle them up, and then you're going to go ahead and place them on top of each other, thusly forming a singular deck. From there, you'll be drawing cards, and everybody will be utilizing the cards. Uh, and they'll be looking at the bottom aspect of the cards. You'll choose either the left or the right-hand side, and then you'll fill in on your board uh, what is required based on what you're allowed to fill in. Like this one, three of any type. Uh, this one here is four five, but it has to be filled in that form. You can't fill outside of your shape and you're trying to fill in your entire thing. And as you keep going, you'll choose left to right, fill in, choose left to right, fill in, and you'll keep going. Eventually you'll run into a uh, game over. When that happens, that's going to trigger a check. You'll check to see if you have at least one of these guys fully filled in. In this case, this example, I have all of them filled in because I played the game. Um, but if you don't have at least one filled in, um, then you're going to basically lose a coin. You have three coins in the game. If at any point you're trying to fill something in with one of the cards here and you can't, you'll lose an HP. If you run out of HP, it'll also cost you a coin. When you come over to the next game over, the second one, if you don't have at least two of these guys filled in, then you'll lose another coin. The game's going to end in a variety of different ways, whether it be somebody fills in all of their pieces here, um, or what, what are some other ways? You can't draw any other cards. A player has no more life or coins left, and a player can't use a coin when the flip the game over card comes up. Those are all the different ways that the game can trigger the ending. When the game ends, you'll calculate your points. You'll take a look at your scoreboard. You'll say, okay, for each one of these that I filled in, I'll score the points based on uh, how much they're worth. And for each uh, space I don't fill in, that's minus one point for each of them. You'll get one point for each heart you have that hasn't been X'd out. And then you're going to get three co three points for each coin that you haven't, that you haven't uh, used for either HP or for the insert coin card cards. Put your tally right up there where it's 46 points and whoever has the most points is the winner and there's a plethora of different tiebreakers. And that's pretty much it for the most part. All three of these different games play different ways. A single player competitive dungeon crawl, a one to two player cooperative game in which you're utilizing tactics and gathering specific actions and movement. And then over here is of course a unique style of a roll and write where you're also basically filling in shapes in a puzzle fashion. All right let's come up and review it. So let's talk about all three of the games in the blue collection. And we'll start with this one and we'll go all the way across. The first one being the one card dungeon game. Obviously it is as stated. It has a singular card that has a front and the back that you will be playing with as you basically flip them around to play with your character. You'll use your character, which is a dot with a certain amount of HP, and you'll be rolling dice and setting stats and moving your character around fighting different monsters, whether it be a spider or ogres or some type of beast that you'll need to defeat and get across the tower or the, the room on the dungeons in order to successfully win the game. Uh, this game here is a lot of content for what it comes with. One card and some dice you would not assume to have as much content as this one does and as much strategy but as you decide which spaces you need to place the die based on your rolls you'll start to see the amount of complexity you'll need to en enact in order to succeed in the game. Will you use your highest rolls to move and to attack or maybe you want to protect yourself in defense or maybe you get a bunch of high rolls and you're just going to do a great job during that specific dungeon area or a bunch of low rolls and you need to actually think about where you're going to be placing your character and what the baddies are going to do because the baddies all function differently based on the floor that you are interacting with and how many baddies there are. You'll lose health as you go across the floors and if you're not careful your character will pass on thusly having you restart the dungeon. Uh, also the unique aspect of 
uh, basically increasing your character's stats as you go throughout the game too because as you progress and successfully beat floors you'll be flipping the coins and moving them from one to two to three giving yourself even more stronger base stats which are very important or of course you can heal yourself uh, the choice is yours and the choice does extremely matter in the game uh, this is a single player game doesn't utilize a whole lot of stuff and you can play in a very small area all you need is a place to roll the die and a place to set the card everything else is going to be right along in that little edge area of the game uh, the replayability of course comes from the fact that it's going to be played over a number of 12 different rounds utilizing the singular card and once you've gone through it that's pretty much how the game works that's pretty uh, there's there's no like different monsters or bosses you'll fight each time you go through uh, it's just simply how far can you get kind of like a slay the spire but if you're only using one card uh, the next one over here is the cyber doom tower this one is in complexity much higher than the previous game we just talked about uh, this one here utilizes different uh, stacks of card different cards with different uh, layers of uh, challenging difficulty as you progress through getting the keys coming back going up getting the other key so on and so forth trying to defeat that main boss at the end of the tower utilizing your die utilizing the different weapons you can get do you want to progress farther into the certain areas to get those items that you need of course certain actions are free but moving and attacking or not do you want to defeat those guys uh if you if you do manage to wait or don't spend as much time in certain areas, the baddies will continue to progress throughout the floors, either by attacking you or simply by getting to the end, thus limiting your ability to attack. And it's kind of a race against time, deducing what you need, when you want to use your actions and how. Are you willing to spend your luck as well as utilize your energy to improve your situation, but also reduce the odds of you using uh, those cards later or those, uh, you know, either the cards for the abilities or even just your your points later in the game which might be very beneficial because it gets progressively more challenging and of course with the added secondary player presents a great challenge in the game uh, how many different items do you want how far do you want to go and what and what's your plan of attack and, and these guys are all sort of coming towards you as you try and deal with these towers here when you're playing with more players there's another tower um, floor that is enacted and of course another character another player that is playing with you in the game if you like a fully cooperative game play in a small area with a ton of complexity a ton of unique little different strategies each time you play the game you'll have to enact a different type of strategy and of course the tower will be different in its own way as well because you can kind of mix and match them and kind of create your own labyrinth of despair that you'll have to deal with uh, that's kind of what that one has going for it uh, it is complexity level like I said is a little higher if you like a cooperative game you're going to enjoy this one and of course pushing your luck as well as the die rolling aspect of the game and then we come up to insert coin to play this one is your typical roll and write except it's not because you you are actually going to be starting the game off by selecting these cards, uh, drawing them, and then filling them in onto your uh, player board area here, and trying to get as much done as you possibly can before the game over happens. Now, game overs can happen at any point in time as you're drawing cards, and thusly limit the scoring, but it affects all players the same, making it balanced and fair. Trying to utilize as little life and as much space as you possibly can with the cards. Uh, focusing on one at a time is probably very important to get those special abilities and to prevent you from losing coins. If you can fill all your spaces in, as well as deal with not having to um, not be placing a certain, you know, uh, little fill in areas, you're going to do much better in this game. It's kind of a mix of a puzzle game as well, which is really cool. And choosing the different shapes, obviously the bigger ones will give you more points, but maybe harder to fill in and you can lose points if you don't fill in all the spaces at the end of the game and the game trigger is based on the player who finishes first which is likely the player that has the least amount of spaces provided they use the specific options on the bottom of the card to the best of their ability uh, this one is probably my fit well it's not probably it is definitely my favorite game of the bunch very quick very simple to explain very easy to play the game and it uses a very unique roll and write system that enacts lives and coins and the difference of play is not only what you choose to utilize as far as the different 
uh, they're different little images, kind of like Galaga and those different like shooting games. Uh, but not only just choosing those, but also how you fill in and having those options when you choose to fill in will make a big difference as well. And the game being ended in the same fairness and capacity um, is, is really nice as well. Calculating the points, the score is always going to be very close. And being able to play with up to six players is nice as well. So in this game uh, set, you're going to have the single player game, which is com competitive, of course, and then the two-player or um, uh, the two or one-player cooperative game and then finally the competitive game that plays up to six players which is nice as well so you have a wide variety of different games to choose from quality of the game is very nice I mean ma mainly all the die here pretty much just basic die um, and of course the cards are mainly styled cards you're used to them I suppose and the second game obviously has the tokens which are nice all the artwork is very retro style I really enjoy the artwork for these games it feels like I'm going back to Tron and going back to Galaga, all the basic Nintendo 8-bit style games, and I like that. And of course, the fact that all the strategies of the different games are going to work really well. Um, if I wanted a game that I wanted to sit down and play in a kind of party atmosphere, I have that option. If I have a game where I can only sit down and play by myself while watching a show or doing something, I can do that as well. It's very easy to determine, like, save your, your scores and your stats and whatnot for the one deck dungeon. Um, and of course, I want something a little more lengthy, a little more strategy based and a thought provoking than I have the tower game to choose from. So all three games present a unique twist as to how you would like to play them and when you'd like to play them. And artwork is solid. I really enjoyed this collection of games. This is probably one of, if not my favorite set of games uh, of different types uh, to play. And the fact that they all come in the same similar style boxes with unique artwork is really cool. I could see myself just as a collector wanting to have as many of these little games in, in an area as I possibly can. And the fact that there is going to be multiple different uh, collections, I imagine, if you have the blue collection and this does well, there might be a red and a green collection, would be really, really cool. And they're all going to fit really nicely in my shelf and my little, uh, my little small games that I collect area. So I am looking forward to seeing more of these collections. Overall, though, the blue collection is really cool. Uh, obviously, the, the small negative, I suppose, is the one deck dungeon doesn't have a huge amount of replayability based on the fact that you're just going through the same dungeon over and over again. Uh, the secondary game, Doom Tower, is going to be a little bit more complex than you probably would assume for a smaller game, which is good or bad, depending on what you think. And then uh, the third game, I've got nothing. I really enjoyed that one. That was a lot of fun. But let me know what you guys think down down below in the comment section. Is the game something you're interested in? Are these games? Uh, and if so, which one would be your favorite? Uh, down below is a link down below so you can check out the Kickstarter to see these games in action and whether you guys want to pick it up or not. Thank you guys for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the Blue Collection by Little Rocket Games. Like I said before, if you're interested in picking up these three games, there's a link down below in the description currently available to you on Kickstarter. Uh, it, it, the collection aspect alone in the artwork is something that makes me very intrigued about these games and wanting to have the collections organized in my little display case because I'm a big fan of the style of artwork. You can also go ahead and check out our website, unfilteredgamer.com, blog posts, giveaways, Kickstarter lists, and more. We're moving though. We'll have a new change of studio in the next couple of weeks here. I will be basically pre-recording videos shortly. Thusly, you probably won't see a lot of social media aspect. I won't, I won't be present on the social media spaces, but my videos and stuff like that and content from the website will be coming out, even though I might not be around because I'll be packing up games and furniture and moving to a full, larger location, bigger studio, studio, better quality, everything to make it more um, enjoyable videos for you guys to watch. But hopefully this has been good enough as, as it's been for the last four years. So hopefully you guys will enjoy a new change of scenery and some more stuff going on um, with us in our new adventure in life. <laughs> Callie's been very excited about that. Speaking of Callie, Moonshell, a mermaid game, is currently on pre-order. You can pick that game up still if you would like. It's her puzzle game. We made it. It's on Kickstarter, um, and we will be closing that down at the end of the month here. So last couple chances to get the game before we get our prototype samples in and start manufacturing to send them out to you guys. Expect an update very soon. We're just waiting for an update ourselves, which is why I keep giving you micro-updates on these videos. Join us on Patreon if you want to support us, helping us do our live streams every Wednesday at 6.30 p.m. p.m. We like to do giveaways and all that, which will resume once we finish our move. And for those of you waiting for games, expect them to come momentarily, either right after we move or right before, because I'll have all these games out. That's all I got for you guys this time. And as always, I look forward to uh, collecting the blue collection with you next time. See you later, guys. <laughs>